tail's still a little fluffed, but it was quite a bit more fluffy. I don't know why. Well, I was planning on redoing my desktop. I'd been mentioning that my desktop's been blue screening lately. Um, and cleaned off the thermal paste. See? It's an i7. You can't see it. There we go. 4790K. Um, but I found out that I'm actually out of thermal paste. Yes, Zone, I know you want to go to bed. See, this is what I have to deal with right there. Meow. Meow. Hi, Zone. Anyway, um... Again, I'm out of thermal paste, and my housemate isn't here, so I can't ask him for any. Uh, Amazon will be here on Thursday with thermal paste. That's the best I can do. Cleaned it out, this machine, a little bit. This is still a bit dusty over here, though. Uh, it's not that bad, but a little dusty. I also made sure to clean out my graphics card. GTX 970. Um, yeah. I took my little air compressor to it. It's fairly clean now. Seriously, cat. See, this is what I deal with. I also have my gigantic heat sink of doom. I mean, look at the size. This is my hand in comparison. I cannot palm this. And I actually had removed the fan in the middle because uh, my temperatures were perfectly fine, and it made it really difficult for me to actually get at other components. So, cleaned this off, made sure I polished that again. I just need thermal paste to put things back together. Yep. I swear, I have alarms for both the morning and the evening because of, well, especially zone. Zone in particular, zone in particular wants me to make sure that I don't go to bed too late. I've already taken my shower for tonight, so I don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, let me go ahead and talk a bit upstairs, I suppose. By the way, good kitten internet. I'll go ahead and feed the kitties while I'm talking. Turning on lights as I go, so expect weird color balancing issues. So, um, yes, yes, you're getting fed now, Zone. His tail is also a weapon of mass destruction. I didn't record it, but basically anything at tail height, he will knock over. Uh, let's go ahead and get your food. It's a nice mirror of that second video that I made, I suppose. Still TD. Two one-third cups for Issun and Zone. And a quarter cup for Bukiti. Um, by the way, that's part of the reason why my cats appear to be so slick. Slick. Lean. Sleek. I apparently merged words together and got slick. Anyway, um, it's because they're on a controlled diet. And... Boo Kitty in particular really doesn't like the controlled diet. Um, Isun used to have the same problem. Sun doesn't have this problem anymore. Now Isun definitely doesn't have a problem with the food. Uh, let's go ahead and feed Boo. Oops. Meow. Meow. Turn on light. This is the thing I had stepped on before that caused me to bruise my foot for a while and internal bleeding. Bookie me. <clears throat> Silly kitty. Um, let's go ahead and turn off the light again. Good night, boo kitty. I love you. So yeah, um, Boo and Isun live in different bedrooms, basically. Uh, all three of my cats have their own bedrooms. I uh, Isun's bedroom, which is the one I'm walking in now, is shared by Kriatir, 
when they're actually here. Um, good night, Asian. I love you. He's the one out and about this evening, so. Meow. I just gave you food, kitty cat. See, this is what I mean by he doesn't really care as much about food anymore. Although I just walked back in. Oh yeah, I need to prop the door open. It's dark. Um, so yeah. Isun shares bedroom with Kreatir. Zun shares the bedroom with me. This is because Zun Kitty right here will do everything possible to make sure that he's in the same room as me overnight. Everything. Ah, silly kitty. Okay, so I wanted to cover a little bit over some of my physical problems. I definitely had a discussion, several discussions, in fact, over a lot of my mental issues. Uh, namely, I've been diagnosed with Severe depression, multiple anxiety disorders. Um, I potentially have ADHD. Uh, my therapist is actually thinking that I have a... Sorry, my arm's getting tired. Um, I have probably a fairly minor, slight case with ADHD. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, that's probably the least of my mental problems, to be honest. But I also have a lot of physical problems. If you notice when I'm doing these, now, mind you, I'm recording most of these using my uh, phone because my phone actually has the best video recording capabilities of my devices other than my real, um, the Sony Alpha 6000, which is really bad at motion. As in, it has absolutely no way of doing motion stabilization whatsoever but you'll notice that i keep switching my hands whenever i'm doing this like right now i'm holding the phone with my right hand then i'll switch it over to holding it with my left hand see right hands up uh the reason being is that i barely have any uh upper body strength and part of the reason for that are these things here my shoulders um in short my shoulders are malformed i have mentioned this part a little bit in some videos Ugh, that's a terrible angle. I'm trying to find an angle that doesn't look like garbage. Um, my shoulders are malformed, uh, so rather than a ball and cuff style of joint or a rotator cuff, my cuff, so to speak, is flanged. What that ends up meaning is that my rotator cuffs can actually pop out of socket with certain types of use. Those use include holding my arms up. If I hold them up long enough, they will start dislocating themselves. And I do mean themselves. I could, um, back when I was in college was the last time that this particular event happened, but just sitting in a chair using my computer, uh, I was probably playing a video game at the time, I don't remember to be honest, but just sitting at a computer and all of a sudden both shoulders dislocate themselves while I'm sitting down not doing anything. Simultaneous dislocations. <sighs> That's just my shoulders. Hands, I have been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, I think it was. One of the types of arthritis. I'd have to look at my medical record. Um, I've been diagnosed with arthritis. I definitely have some repetitive motion injuries, uh, mostly because I've been working on computers my entire life. Huh. <sighs> and... Most people up until probably my generation and or younger, mostly, um, when they've worked on computers their entire lives, they're talking about, you know, starting computers at 20, get a little bit younger, maybe teenage years. Yeah, I started using a computer before I reached my first year of age. Now, if you want real use of a computer where I'm actually knowing what I'm doing, that's probably more like four that still means I've been using computers for over 30 years. And you get injuries when you've been using computers for over 30 years. Um, as a result, my hands are garbage at this point. Um, also, more recently, this, the, like, area of your thumb here, uh, bad lighting, here we go. The area of your thumb here, yeah, I've been getting massive sharp pains going up that lately. Uh, it's from overuse because I primarily use trackballs. The reason why I use trackballs, so 
thumb base trackball, moving your thumb around like that. The reason why I do that is because I have too many shoulder injuries from using mice. So I'm having fun trying to find some type of mouse-like device that I can actually use. And I've just started talking about my physical problems with the upper parts of my body. That ignores the fact that I have an absolutely rotten stomach that is prone... And I have... Uh, my intestines are prone to cramping in stressful situations. Um, yeah, it's... That's always fun. Um, so I don't have a great way of comparing pain with other people. Except for the fact that I'm a kidney stone sufferer. So I've gone through kidney stones and I have an idea as to where that lies on my pain scale. For me, when I describe like the shooting pains I was talking about going through the padding area of my thumb. And it's both thumbs, fun fact, even though I only use track balls with one hand. Um, when I'm talking about that pain, I consider it a five on the pain scale. A five is the point where I define it as I get interrupted and cannot perform normal tasks because of my pain. Now, saying that, a five out of ten on a pain scale doesn't sound like that high until you realize that I consider a kidney stone a seven. It's... Zone, are you upset that I'm talking to somebody else? Come on up and let me give you some attention. Please? <laughs> Kitty cat. Anyway, um, seven's kidney stone on my scale. The only major thing that I have that's higher than a seven on my scale that I've experienced is my intestinal cramping, which hits a nine on my scale. I don't... I've never actually had an event that hit a 10 but nines for reference which is or as mentioned it's about as high as my intestinal cramping goes a nine on the scale is enough where if i get hit with an intestinal cramp and these are not constant they are luckily not constant i'd be completely non-functional if that was the case but when i get hit with an intestinal intestinal cramp if i'm just walking along the sidewalk and get hit by a nine rating intestinal cramp I vomit immediately. I It's just an extreme amount of pain, and I cannot describe how it feels. The way I've had a gastroenterologist describe it to me is basically my entire large intestines are cramping all at the exact same moment. So imagine a leg cramp that you might get from, you know, sleeping wrong, which I also get just for fun. Um, imagine that happening, the pain being quite a bit higher and then having it happen for your entire intestinal system all at the exact same moment for absolutely no reason that you can discern. It's great. That's sarcasm, by the way. It's not great at all. Don't do not deal with that. Um, then I've got my legs. I have varicose veins because I inherit every possible bad thing from both of my parents. Um, yes, Zone. I know. Uh... I have had a ruptured Achilles tendon before, so my Achilles tendons are quite weak. Uh, doctors aren't entirely sure why my Achilles tendon ruptured. There was an event when I was a kid, uh, would have been 14, I think. It was freshman year of high school. I don't remember exactly, but um, basically I had been enrolled in Taekwondo and had noticed that my ankle was hurting, is the way that I thought of it. Um... It had been hurting for a while. I tried to convince my mother to n not force me to go to Taekwondo because I hate the idea of self-defense. And she refused. But one night while I was sleeping, I sleep roundhouse kicked a metal bunk bed. I woke up as my leg was falling and yelped out in pain. Um, there's a chance that that's what ruptured my Achilles tendon. But my physical therapists more recently, because I still have problems with that, have pointed out the fact that I had pain before then, there's a good chance that my Achilles tendon wasn't working correctly to begin with. What? Um, as a result, there's a good chance that my tendons uh, suffer the same type of joint problems that the rest of my body does. And yeah, my shoulder issues are more than just my shoulders. I'm, I have hyperextension of pretty much all of the joints of my body. I'm overweight, but very flexible as a result. It's a really weird combination. 
Uh, I know I've talked about that part before. Let's see, what else? My feet, I have cramps going along my feet frequently. Uh, that's always fun. I have various aches and pains. Oh yeah, I forgot my head. Um, I am a migraine sufferer, just because why not? Um, in general, my intestinal cramps started going away when I hit puberty. It's crazy cat hour, apparently. I should probably record that, but oh well. Um, my intestinal cramps started becoming less frequent as I went through puberty, but instead I started gaining migraines because, you know, that's a good idea. And in my case, most of my migraines went away when I went into glasses. See, my eyes are really weird, just like the rest of me. And it's not just the fact that I have the type of hazel eyes that change color based off of what I'm wearing, which is awesome to show off, but... There must be a cat outside. Sun's acting a bit weird, and this tail is very fluffed. Let me show you. Meow. Look at that fluff. Is Tonka outside again? Oh. Such fluff. Or is it just because you're in crazy cat hour mode? I wouldn't be able to see anything outside if I wanted to because it is dark. Dark. Inside lights not on. Yeah, I think it's just crazy cat arrow mode. Bloop. <laughs> Silly kitty. So, um, need to say with all of these physical problems that I have, I am in pain very often. Um, there's a reason why it's called chronic pain for me. It's not constant. I'm not literally always in pain. Luckily. But I am in pain a vast majority of the day at this point. Um, to give you an idea, the last day... Oh, I forgot to finish describing my eyes, but anyway. Um, the last day that I was not in pain for a day was when I was in college over 15 years ago. I have had some type of pain throughout the day every day since then. And that day 15 years ago was a momentous occasion. It wasn't just... All of a sudden, I started getting pain every day. No, it was that was in of itself the first time I had been without pain in multiple years and so on. So, yeah, um, I deal with a lot of pain. Now, eyes. I wanted to talk about that because my eyes are actually kind of cool in some ways and really bizarre in others. You'll notice that I wear glasses. Um, frequently when I'm in vlogging, I usually take them off or put them on top of my head because I don't like the way it looks in a camera for the reflections and so on. But you'll notice that I don't actually have problems seeing things without my glasses. So, fun fact, um, this eye here is effectively at 2020 vision at this point. Um, my left eye, on the other hand, is at, was it 4020? Basically, and this is according to my ophthalmologist, um, running theory is that my eyes started adjusting based off of computer usage. And one eye is nearsighted, one eye is farsighted as a result. My right eye is farsighted, my left eye is nearsighted. So up close, I see things extremely well. Far away, at the time before I went into glasses, I also saw things far away really well. And the reason for that is that my brain was compensating and constantly switching which eye was dominant based off of what I was doing. The only time both of my eyes were roughly equal in power was at approximately half a meter away, or about what you would expect a computer monitor to be at. So my eyes have basically adjusted to my career type. Unfortunately, I do a lot of walking outdoors, and what was happening is that my eyes were constantly rebalancing and causing me to get migraines. That's the theory, at least. It's most likely what it is that it was just the straw that broke the camel's back type of thing. Uh, my migraines are definitely stress-caused, but they basically went away when I went into glasses. And then whenever I need to have my prescription change, they come back. And they, they're they back at the moment. Uh, I need to talk with my ophthalmologist, except that I only have one free appointment a year, and my last appointment was in June. So, um, yeah, 
So these glasses are very thin as a result because the right eye is basically plain glass at this point, or plain plastic, whatever. And the left eye is barely even there to begin with. Um, and here's where the weird part comes in. So these lenses, I, I've had to change lenses every year. I have not had the same prescription from year to year, which is one of the reasons why I haven't even considered anything like laser eye surgery or anything like that, because one, my vision's actually not that bad, and two, it's not constant. Um, my These glasses are actually the lightest that I've ever had. I've had glasses for four years now, four different prescriptions, um, and the last two prescriptions have actually been lighter than the previous ones. Basically, my eyes are slowly adjusting toward 2020 again. The other thing being that growing up, I didn't have 2020 vision. 2020 is for reference for people that aren't used to glasses. 2020 is not perfect. 2020 is average, or median, actually, not average. Um, 2020 is median vision, which is that a normal median person at 20 feet sees X. If you have 2020 vision, you see the same X. If you have 4020 vision, what you see at 20 feet is more like what somebody else sees at 40 feet. The indication that that means that you are nearsighted. Um, in my case, originally, my vision was 2010. 10, which is to say, or 1020, 10, 10, 10, 2010, I think is the correct term. Maybe it's 2040 for the other one. Anyway, my vision was basically where what, what a normal person sees at 20 feet, I see more like at 10 feet, which is to say, or that's not right. I'll have to go look this up again. Sorry, that's what I see at 10 feet, a normal person sees at 20? No. Basically, what it boils down to is that I see about twice as well as an average person. That's where what I was growing up with. My distance vision was absurdly good. It wasn't just, oh, hey, look, those trees are very precise back there. It was, oh, that street sign a kilometer away says this type of vision. And parts of that are still here to get today. My um, vision for up close, I see extremely tiny print easily. Um, I always poke fun at my ophthalmologist when they give me the little eye chart up at the front and they ask me to read the, read the line that is, um, the smallest line that you could read clearly and I read the copyright line at the bottom. She hates it when I do that. Uh, so yeah, I thought I would talk a little bit about my physical things and cover the computer and crazy cat hour. Hold on. This kitty right there. Yep, you. You are crazy. Also, your tail is gorgeous. And you are gorgeous. You are one of my top three kitties. And you are cute. I know better than put my hands too close because this is your nest and you will attack anything coming toward your nest. Oh, you are so cute. Anyway, have a nice day, Internet. Hope everybody has good kittens, or at the very least, adorable kittens. See what I mean? You get too close, you get nommed. Good night.